Police department, can you guys step out for me? Thank you. Can you see your Please be very careful. Yeah. Set it down. No, no. Set it down now. Back up. No, no. Back up. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. No. Okay. Back up. Back up now. Drop the knife. Police officers in Las Cruces, Mexico showed up uh, to a woman's front door after her uh, daughter and granddaughter called them to help with uh, a mental health episode that was happening. That was with 75 year old Amelia Baca. Uh, again, her daughter uh, called. There was also a young uh, five, seven year old girl in the house as well. As you can see, she had knives in her hand and I counted when I was editing that within 10 to 11 seconds of that video even starting, a gun was out. As you saw what was going on there. Uh, so the cop pulled a dro drew his gun on Amelia and started screaming. And you can imagine then he killed her, watch. And I need to check on them. Okay. We need to check at 827. We got one knife right here. We got another one. I don't know where the second knife is. Her hands are clear. You notice he said there when uh, I don't know if anyone even asked him. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I don't think we're concerned about you, the guy with the gun in your hand who was screaming obscenities as soon as he walked up to this elderly woman's front door. So uh, more details, Amelia Baca, she's of Las Cruces. She was shot dead, this was April 16th. And this uh, officer was a nine year veteran. And that's after her daughter, as I mentioned, called 911 and reported that the woman was quote, trying to kill me. Uh, let's go to that 911 call to see the, the energy and the, the issues that she did have there, let's watch. I really need an officer, an ambulance or someone because my mother's getting aggressive right now. She's 75 and she has dementia. Dementia, I'm hiding in a room because she's threatening to kill me. Does she have any weapons? I don't know if she got weapons from the kitchen and I have a little one here. Child, I'm asking, are you with your child? Yes, I'm with my child, but I'm freaking out right now. And do you know if she's on any type of medication? I'm not sure if she took her medication this morning. And my daughter, she's in her room and my mother's still out there with the knife. Okay. So she does have a knife in her hand? I believe so because it, it sounds like it. Yeah, she actually does have a knife. Okay, well, do you know what she's doing with the knife? Um, hitting the floor saying she's gonna kill me. So there's audio of that call where again she Openly points out that her mother has dementia and potentially isn't on her medication and isn't necessarily in this state every time that she sees her. So in this post incident interview, which was obtained by the Los Cruces Sun News, her granddaughter, Albitar Eno, revealed that the old woman didn't know English and that she had asked the officer not to shoot Baca. I told them plenty of times, as you also saw in that video, she walked out, please be careful with her. Don't shoot her, she's mentally ill, is what she told detectives. That's according to Las Cruces Sun News. And she also said that there was no danger. Um, we don't have to go to this last thing where she's speaking to the police officers because this is pretty much uh, similar to what was being said. But really fast, Jessica, uh, I do want to point out this part because this was my first thought. What about some uh, intervention crisis folks, right? There's a little bit of irony when it comes to that because the American Civil Liberties Union of New Mexico slammed the department for not having a crisis intervention team on the scene. And they said, if this team had been deployed to de-escalate the situation, Baca may still be alive today and receiving the help that she needed. The police department also shared that the officer who has yet to be named or charged with a crime has more than 70 hours of crisis intervention training and is currently working on the patrol desk. So Jessica, apparently there was a crisis intervention officer on the scene. It was the guy who decided to shoot her two times as he's screaming obscenities because that's crisis intervention. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, when police show up to situations like this, it seems as though they only escalate. And when the police department was asked, you know, 
why didn't you send a, a team that could help with mental health crises, etc. They refuse to respond. And it reminds me of what's going on in Atlanta right now where they have the 311 number you can call where you can get a specialist in, in psychology or someone to help with situations of poverty instead of calling the police. Because a lot of people think you know, in crisis situations, we call the police because they're supposed to help make us safe. But people are slowly realizing that they make the situation more unsafe. And he had his gun out, yeah, 11 seconds into the video. But from the start of his interaction with this abuelita, it's insane. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it's right off the bat, and and again, um, people always have said before, you know, you guys talk about defunding the police. Why are you guys protesting against police? They only killed George Floyd in cold blood in front of a crowd of people, which this is not the first time. But that's what triggered the uh, the summer of 2020 protests. And as people say, hey, we need to do something about the cops, and they go, well, um, I bet next time you're in trouble, you're going to call the cops. No. Actually, many people who know how cops generally tend to react, especially when it comes to situations at their home and between maybe family or friends, they don't call the police because they know how it will go. So no, it's not the case that people are like, they dog out the police and then as soon as they need them, they're calling them saying, please come save me. That is not the case because actually there's times when people do wish they'd come and help and they do this instead. Uh, one of the women there, uh, the daughter of the granddaughter did say also they thought he had a taser out until they heard the gunshots. Just imagine you made it to 75 years old and this is how your life ends. It always frustrates me when things like this happen. When you, when you hear about an elderly person or a couple that gets murdered or something and they're 80 years old and you're like, man, this is the way that this long life ends. And this way it happened here for Amelia and it's just sad. Um, hopefully they get the, the justice that they deserve. We've, they've yet to name that officer, um, but maybe he needs some more crisis training or maybe the entire department needs to figure out how to uh, break down some actual crisis training.